continue to um, give God the praise and glory for this hour. We come looking at the book of Ezra, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 12. Ezra, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 12. Our topic this morning is confession and correction. Our dope topic is faith and action preaching. Mm. When I saw that topic this morning, last uh, this week, uh, I uh, I was touched because uh, it hit me. Faith and action preacher. So I, I had a feeling that you know this was meant for me to teach this morning because <laughs> I've, I've been dealing with some things, and that hit right there. Not only did it hit, but understanding about the action that Ezra was taking here made things come even clearer from God. See, uh, in the Bible, it, it was talking about the topic here, the people's confession of sin. As we start in verse 1 here, now when Ezra had prayed and when he had confessed, Weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children. For the people wept very sorrow. So, and I look here, and I like the way the writer here kind of opens up everything here. After this great prayer meeting, there began a movement of revival. And revival begins with the people and, and always leads to reformation. And when there is a true revival, you don't need a fingerprint expert to find the results. I look here, what's missing is a good old revival. And, and I like the way the writer starts there. And he talks about an intense conversation of sin comes, came over God's people at, the, at this particular time, and it was certainly something that was needed. When we look here, and... Uh, Shemach and the son of Jehal, one of the sons of Em, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of people and of the land, yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now, therefore, let us take a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them according to the counsel of my Lord, and those that tremble at the commandment of our God, and let it be done according to the law. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. Then, Ezra, then rose Ezra and made the chief priests, the Levites, and all Israel, to swear that they should do according to this word, and they swear. Then Israel rose up from before the house of God and went into the chamber of Jehan, the son of Azabah, and then he came thither. He did eat no bread, nor drink water, for he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. And they made proclamation through out of Judah and Jerusalem unto all the children of the captivity that they should gather themselves together unto Jerusalem and that whosoever would not come with the days, with three days according to the counsel of the prince, the prince and the elders, all his substance should be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away. 
Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month of the twelfth day of the month, and all the people sat in the streets of the house of God, trembling because of this matter, and for the great rain. And Israel, the priest, stood up and said unto them, have, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Now, therefore, make confession unto the Lord, God of your fathers, and do his pleasure, and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. Twelfth verse, then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, as thou hast said, so must we do. Amen. Amen. As I was saying earlier, Ezra really started this thing off powerful. And Ezra set a standard of repentance by his own behavior. Okay? His, his weeping brought others to the point of sorrow. Some may respond when we tell them what to do, but more will follow if we show them what to do and, and participate ourselves. See, so many times, you know, we, we, we talk a lot, but do we walk it? Ezra walked it here. And that's the thing that we got to understand. When I was talking about a revival earlier, uh -huh. that's a movement right there. Right. And, and when, we, when we show in that type of setting how we should praise God to the highest and how we should also confess our sins, it, became, it, it makes a movement in other people. Too many times we sit on our thumbs and, our, and, 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 and we sit and we talk a good game, but we don't walk it. And, and I like the way Andrew stood up and he, he showed people basically how to live for God. Ezra's actions actually motivated a leader to make a significant stand. You, you, you can never predict who will follow or benefit from your examples. We, we, don't, know who's ever, who, we don't know who's watching us. We don't. So and that's why for me, I don't mind telling people the things that I've been through. Because if they know your past and they see where you're standing at right now, they know that change is possible. They know that your walk is real. Because if, when, when, when I let people know and I confess to them and, and, and they see me living it day in and day out, don't you think that can have an effect on them? I, I never forget this here. Last year, we, we were sitting in the classroom, and, and, and I was able, we had a, a roundtable session. And a lot of the children was going through a whole bunch of things in life. And when they look at you or look at me, they, didn't, they, they never knew what I've been through in life. They never knew my story. And so at a point in time there, it was like we having a revival. Okay? So I, I got a chance to tell my story to them and the things that I've been through. So let them know that they weren't by themselves. And at the end of that conversation, at the end of that day, those young children understood who God was. And how if you allow yourself to connect to the vine and make the change, you can do so. And not only that, 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 that you still can be a great person and have fun in life, but you guess what? You can have fun in a different way, through God's eyes. And that you can be a leader. And, and, and they can be strong. And to this day, I've seen one of those children, even though I'm not at their school anymore, I've seen one of those children not too long ago. And, and, and they said, Coach, you don't know how much of an effect that you had on my life. Understanding that the things that you done, and you confessed in front of us as children. But I said, I wasn't even just confessing in front to you. I was confessing to God. It made a movement. 
just like Ezra made a movement among those people. And not only that, he affected leaders. Following Ezra's earnest prayer, the people confessed their sins to God also. Then they asked for direction and restoring their relationship with God. See, you got to understand that true repentance does not end with words of confession that, that would be mere lip service. My daddy used to always say, a man can make his mouth say anything. But what would your actions do? Your actions change people. But lip service does nothing but set them up for failure. You with me? So you, you have to be able to walk the, the, the talk as well. See, it must be led to change attitudes and correct behavior. See, when you sin and you're truly sorry, confess this to God. Ask for forgiveness and accept his grace and mercy. Then as an act of thanks, thankfulness for your forgiveness, make the needed corrections. Don't go back doing the same thing again. Why, why we do that? I'm going to tell you why. Because we're reading about the Bible, God forgiving us how many? 70 times 70. So we think that we can continue to do the same act over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Yeah. Understand his words there. Because guess what? The, when you commit the same thing over and over and over and over, it becomes stupidity. I'm just going to keep it real. So you're setting yourself up for failure. And how can you change people when you're doing the same thing over and over and they see it? How can you make an impact on somebody's life that way? You cannot. I cannot be back in the clubs again like I used to be. And get up here on Saturday morning and try to teach Bibles Sunday school. I can't do that. That's insane right there. How are you going to respect me when you see me dropping it like it's hot? Can't do that. The only thing I want to drop like it's hot is these words right here because it is hot. It'll put you on fire and make you stand up. You won't want to see no more. You'll shout a praise. That's the thing that Ezra's trying to get. That's what we're talking about here. You know, when we look at a movement and a change, that's why I like the way the writer here started off this, like, as a revival. He gave it an example as a revival. Revival makes changes in people. You ever, it revived. That's what he's just talking about, it reviving you. And that's what's missing in this world right now. We need to be revived. Amen. As we look here, let me get to my spot here. I had it marked here. Today, we, we are too busy preaching repentance to a lost world. God is asking for the world to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Yeah. Acts 16 and 31. See, when, when you come to Christ yeah. as Savior, something else happens. It, it happened to the Thessalonians. In 1 Thessalonians verse, chapter 1, verse 9, Paul says, for they themselves shew of us what manner of what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how we turn to God from idols to serve the living true God. See, turning to God takes a priority over turning from idols. We worship too many things. Too many things. And I, and I can say that. I found myself worshiping my career so much it drove me crazy. I did. But I can confess to that right now. I can. 
And I thought it was the end of all in when it ended. But I find myself right now that when I find myself truly trusting in God and turning to God and worshiping him, there is no end. It's just the beginning of something even greater. Pastor hit something this morning just a few seconds ago to me. That when we put our hands in the hands of the man that stirs the water and controls the sea, greater things are to come. Because he is the greatest thing on earth. And if we could turn to just live, and just live the life that he has called us to live and try to live our own lives, come on, y'all. It's, it's, it's even greater. But, but, but what passes, it touched me because it reminded me of the things that I've been going through. That God is who he say he is. He loves us unconditionally. Quit worshiping things. He said, I'm a jealous God. Can't do it. See, repentance does not precede faith. Faith goes before and repentance follows. If it doesn't follow, the faith is not genuine. It isn't saving faith. See, repentance is the thing that is so lacking in the church today. See, have you ever noticed that in the Bible, God's asked the church to repent? Mm. See, in the seven letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor, recorded in the book of Revelation, God asked all but two of them to repent. God was talking to believers, not to the unsaved people. Come on, church. We're the example, right? We have to lead, right? That's what God is telling us to do. When are we going to repent? When are we going to step out and lead like we're supposed to? When, when, when are we going to stop judging people because they don't look like us and act like us? How are we going to be a living example when we're doing the things that we're doing? Can't do it. Can't do it. So as it went to God in genuine repentance and others are following suit. Give an example right there how we're supposed to be. That's, what, that's the church right there, y'all. That's the church. But we are the church, right? We are the church. This is just a church house. So we have to repent. We, we have to show people how to really walk. We have to be the ones that be the living example how God really wants us to be in order to touch those that don't know him. As we move on. Why were the men condemned to send away their wives and children? Although the measure was extreme, intermarriage to pagans was strictly forbidden. Deuteronomy 7, verses 3 through 4 talks about that also. One idolized person can affect hundreds more. Even the priests and Levites were intermarried, which could be comp compared today to Christians ministries marrying someone who follows another religion. Mm. You know, it, it's, it, it was painful to see marriages break up. But we can't mix it like that, y'all. It can't be. You know, and we know Paul talks about, you know, a believer and a non-believer being married. And that believer making an impact and change to get that non-believer to follow suit with Christ. But when we look here, it, it, it's tough to get people to change their ways. But if we believe in Christ Jesus, 
And, and we allow ourselves to be able to be the service that he calls to be, you make it have an effect on it. But you got to be strong. But they had to separate, though. And, 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 we, and we know that it hurt. We know that it hurt. But, but God has to be the one that has the effect on them. Yeah. See, Ezra's strong act, though a very difficult for some, was necessary to, pres to preserve Israel as a nation committed to God. See, some of the exile of the northern kingdom of Israel had lost both their spiritual and genealogy ide identity through intermarriage. See, their pagan spouses had caused them to worship idols. Yeah. See, the thing about it, though, they were affected by their spouses. Yeah. It wasn't the other way around. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They were, so they started serving idols. See, God doesn't need us that way. If you're going to be a strong Christian, you got to flip the script and have them follow Christ, not you follow him. And see, that's what happens in this day. We get in relationships, whether it's people, whether it's jobs, whether it's all these other things in life, and we allow it to affect us as Christians, the one that's been called. Yeah. See, we can't do that. We got to learn to flip the script on this thing. We got to be the ones that lead and show people that God is the one that we need to be following. Yeah. You follow me? And it, 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 can it be tough when you're seeing all these dollars getting thrown at people? When you're seeing that you get caught up in this world and, and, and things really affect you. Oh, I can have this here. It looks good. But I come to tell you, God looks even better, y'all. Eternal life in heaven looks even better. Because to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord is the greatest gift of all. Line yourself up and set yourself up for that gift right there. So you have to separate yourself from this wicked world. Ezra did not want this to happen to the exiles of the southern kingdom of Judah, y'all. He didn't want it to happen. But guess what? We got to allow ourselves to, 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 to change and, and, and allow God to carry us through this thing. As, as we move forward here, th there were making a real line of separation. Th there were, they were under the Mosaic law in the church today. I, I, I don't believe that you could force the issue as they were doing here. I'm talking about verses 7 and 8. They were moving all of that chaff that, were, that they possibly can from the good wheat it would take about three days to come from any section in that hand. And this is the proclamation was directed to all those who had come out of Babylonian captivity and had returned to rebuild the city, the walls, and the temple. See, they were to come together for a time of spiritual refreshing. But repentance must precede it. Mm, mm, mm. There we go again. Meeting together, revival. A revival. But those who would not come because they felt that things were not being done the way they wanted them done, that's us, had some other objections. They were to, to be cast out of the congregation. See, the church needs a house cleaning today. You understand know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? The church needs a house cleaning today. That's what we need. But see, to forfeit one's property means to be disinherited to those, to, to, to lose one's legal right to own land and to forfeit one's place in the Israel community. See, this was to ensure that no pagan children would inherit the Israel land. Mm. In addition, Anyone who refused to come to Jerusalem would be expelled from the assembly of the exile and not be allowed to worship in the temple. Come on now. The Jews considered this as a horrible punishment. 
punishment. You tell me I can't worship in God's house? Punishment. But see, this is my thing here. See, we allow ourselves to lose what God has given us. We do. Chasing after our own things. I'm a living witness of that. But why shouldn't we chase after God? I'm telling you right now, I've seen in the last few years how following Christ and really chasing after him has changed my life. It really has. It really has for real. And I've gained more. I've gained more. And I'm not talking materialistic things, y'all. I'm talking about a spiritual walk, a spiritual change. I really have. And I feel the difference in my life. I mean, I can wake, I can go through some things and shake it off real quickly. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why won't you want that on you? It's a piece, it's, a, it's some calm, it's calmness. And I remember pre- preaching a, 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 a few years ago about fighting the spirit and flesh. How great it is that when you have that spiritual walk on you, that the flesh is easy to fight with. Because you can go to your knees and pray and God will take all that around because he has you covered. He has you covered. And so for me, I come to understand that this walk with Christ is so great that I can fight off these evil spirits that come on to me. Because every time you hit the floor, when, you, when you're connected to God the right way, Anytime your eyes open up, Christ, Satan is on you. Satan is on you. He's on you. And, and he, he wants you to forfeit everything that you have. He wants you to do that. But yet when you're with Christ Jesus, and you allow yourself to walk the right way and have that spiritual warfare, you can fight it and you won't have to forfeit anything. And see, the Jews considered this to be a horrible punishment when they couldn't worship. Now, right now, you think about right now. We can't come to the house right now and, and worship together. We can't do it. Even though God has allowed us to do these little airways, but being present right here and worshiping close together, some people feel like it's a punishment. So imagine what the Jews felt like. I can't go there. They didn't have internet. They didn't have all this access that we have right now. So if you're a true believer and you can't come in the house, you can't come and worship, I don't care if it's on the street corners. If you can't do it, that's punishment to you because you know you have a true love for God. As we get ready to come to a close here, how fitting that this time of confession and repentance took place in a cold, in the cold and rain. The people trembled because of the chill, but also because these matters were serious. Idols allowed into Jewish homes would have disluded the people faithfulness to God. Although breaking up these families was a pain, were very painful and difficult, pagan worship would have rapidly infected and crippled the new struggle community. See, but today, God does not command couples to break up if one becomes a Christian. Rather, the believing spouse is to seek the other's coming to faith. That's what I was talking about earlier. The other one has to do that. But as believers in Christ, all our sins are forgiven. His death cleaned up Clean us from all sin. It did. Through the confession of our sins, we appreciate Christ's forgiveness for what we have done wrong. See, but when we confess, we are agreeing with God that our thoughts, words, and actions were wrong and contrary to his will. See, we got to understand that the things that we've done wrong, our confessions, we, we, we are agreeing with God. 
of our thoughts, our words, and our actions was wrong and contrary to his will. We are committing to do his will and renouncing in any acts of disobedience. See, regarding re regular confession helps to keep us accountable. I spent a lot of time confessing. I spent a lot of time talking to God, asking for forgiveness, even in my wrong thinking. But it keeps us connected. It keeps us going. It keeps us in the right frame of mind. It keeps all those worries off of us because we know that God is forgiving us for all our sins. And see, we want to separate ourselves from sin and ask God to renew strength in our lives each and every day. Amen? Each and every day. That's why I understand that repentance, the action of repenting, but it has to be sincere. Okay? It has to be sincere. It just can't be, I'm going to do this so God can move me on to the next step. See, Ezra's prayer was serious. It was sincere. It meant something. See, when you start weeping and bawling, as we say, while you praying to God, you know that your heart is being cleansed and, 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 and God is really healing you and, and things are moving in your life. But we sit there, Lord, forgive me. I know I just sinned. Lord, I don't want to go to hell. That don't mean nothing right there. That ain't a fact. That ain't move nothing. But when you're sitting up here and, and, and you're trembling, and you can't even get the words out your mouth because it's a sincere prayer. It's a sincere repentance. That's when the earth starts shaking. The ground starts breaking. And the skies open up. Because God is hearing your prayer and he knows that it's real. Allow yourself to give a sincere repentance. Allow yourself to understand that faith mm, 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 changes all things. Faith and our confession move together because faith and action, preacher, confession and correction is needed. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us this morning in Sunday school as we continue and move on forward to our next service. We Ask that the same spirit be lifted up in the 11 o'clock hour. Amen? Amen.